The Toyota 3VZE 3 liter V6 engine always tends to have a high engine idle. And the problem with that is you can never set base ignition timing without getting the proper idle, which is about 800 or 850 RPM. So I've gone through on this old 1988 Toyota 4Runner and tried to find every vacuum leak possible in this thing, tried to adjust everything to get the engine idle down, but I could never get it lower than 1000 RPM. I ran a smoke test on the whole engine and there was no leaks that I could find at all. So I had to rethink what could possibly be leaking. Maybe I wasn't experiencing an external vacuum leak, but perhaps it was an internal vacuum leak. Let's take a look to see what I mean. So it's no secret that these engines tend to have vacuum leak problems because there are so many vacuum lines going on inside of this engine bay. I mean, just look at this. But surprisingly, being a Toyota, you don't typically get a vacuum leak from one of these lines so long as they're all hooked up. Now there's a lot of other components such as the EGR valve, this EGR modulator, these vacuum solenoid valves over here that control various other functions in the engine bay. And I've gone through all these and none of them have any problems. And of course, I've also tried tampering with this air screw right there in the throttle body and I've turned it all the way in to try and get the idle as low as possible, but I always end up with a thousand RPM, which is not low enough to set base timing on this engine. So that only left one thing left to fix, and that is the idle air control valve that's part of the throttle body assembly. It's actuated by the coolant that's running through it. So when your engine is cold and the coolant is cold, the idle air control valve is all the way open, which allows air from the air filter side of the throttle body to bypass the throttle plate and get into the engine, which ultimately raises the engine RPM to help it warm up quicker. Now, as the engine warms up, the coolant warms up, which then makes the valve close shut. It's a valve that's very similar to your engine's thermostat, where it has a wax filling that expands and contracts based on temperature. Now, I think the one on mine is stuck in the open position even when the engine's all the way warmed up. Now it's not stuck all the way open because the engine RPM does end up coming down from the initial 1600 RPM down to the 1000 RPM, but it, again, it should be lower than that. So we're gonna do a simple test to verify that that's a problem, then we're going to actually fix it. With clear view of the throttle plate, we can see this hole right here. And that is where the idle air control valve grabs air from the air filter side and directs it around the throttle plate and into the intake manifold. So the test we're going to do here is block this off and see if our idle comes back down to where it should be because we're effectively making that valve close by not allowing air to get through there. We're gonna use some aluminum tape like I have here. It's a little bit stronger than normal tape so it doesn't get sucked into the intake. Just cut off a little sliver like this and put it in here, tape it over the hole like so, and that will be how we test it. The tape is in place. Now we are gonna put the intake elbow back on and start it up. It's idling so much lower. I noticed that the idle adjustment screw actually makes a difference now as well. I can screw it in and make it even lower. That right there is around 800 RPM, which is what the manual says should be the standard idle. See right there, it's sitting right there at 800 RPM. Now that we've verified that in fact that is where our high idle is coming from, we need to remove the throttle body. We need to remove the intake elbow here, remove these four 12 millimeter bolts that go around the perimeter of the throttle body, remove these three vacuum lines, take off the throttle cable, remove both the entry and exit uh, coolant lines that go into the throttle body. So one there and one right here. You need to disconnect the throttle position sensor just do that by pulling back on it and then you should be good to go. Also something else to note, you want to make sure you have a new throttle body gasket ready to go in when you reassemble this because likely the one you have on yours is going to tear when you take it off. Mine is new so I'm going to probably reuse it. All right, let's take this out.
All right, so I've got the idle air control valve completely disassembled. And if you can see inside of here, that little gold piece with a silver piece sticking out, that's the wax filled valve that pushes this up and back as the temperature increases. And this little metal dome piece right here on the end of the spring seals up against this threaded collar. And as this pushes up, it seals up against there. And as it keeps pushing, you can see that, that spring ensures that it stays sealed. So while I cleaned all this up with some carburetor cleaner to get it looking pretty, none of it made me think that it would prevent it from sealing all the way. So I have a secondary theory of how to get this to seal up properly. So you notice that the sealing collar is threaded. I have a feeling if we just thread this further down in the body of the throttle body than it was when I took it out, then effectively this spring will have less distance to travel to actually seal up against here. And I think what may happen is that this wax valve piece has just started to deteriorate over time and it can't fully press this valve against the seat anymore. It gets it most of the way there, but it can't really get a good seal on there. So what I'm gonna do on a reassembly is just thread this collar piece in deeper so that it is closer to the valve itself. And that should fix the problem. So really, it's a pretty simple assembly here, just three pieces. To unthread this collar piece, all you need to do is use some scissors and get into these little channels right there and spin it out like that. Once it gets loosened up, you can just use a screwdriver to help twist it out of there. So just slide it into there and unscrew it as if it was a flathead screw. Now it is sealed up by a gasket here on this plate and you want to make sure that that gasket is still in good shape. Mine is. So you don't introduce more air leaks than you originally had. All right, let's put this back together. So I've threaded that in quite a bit deeper now. And what we're doing is basically reducing the cold start RPM. And by screwing this in further, it means that it's definitely going to seal up once the coolant temperature increases and makes the valve start shutting. This might need some tweaking to determine, you know, a balance between having high cold start RPM versus having a definitely shut idle air control valve when it's warmed up. So you simply just adjust that by screwing this out, maybe one half turn at a time and just figuring out what the best engine speed is on cold start but I'm happier having a lower cold start RPM than not having a completely closed idle control valve when it's warmed up. So I've got that screwed in. Oh, I can see three uh, complete threads on that. So that's where I'm gonna start. I think that's going to solve the problem. Let's put this thing back together. So I've warmed it up. It came off fast idle. Fast idle was about 12 or 1300 RPM, which is 300 RPM less than it was before. Granted, it may not have been quite as cold as an actual cold start, but look what the warm idle is now. It's sitting at like 650 RPM. So believe it or not, it's idling too low now. So now we can use that air screw on the throttle body to bring the idle up, which is basically the opposite of what most people have to do on these three VZEs. Usually they idle way too high and you screw that all the way in and you still can't get it below a thousand RPM. We finally figured it out. Let's get it nudged up a bit. So to raise the RPM, we thread it out. That was one whole turn. So that's sitting at 850 RPM. I'm gonna push it in just a little bit. Perfect, 800 RPM. So there you have it. That's how you actually fix a high idle on a 3VZE Toyota engine. Who would have thought? Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys again next time.